Uh, welcome to Early Birds. Um, this is the first episode. I'm very excited to have a very special guest here today. Um, welcome, Bill. Hi, how are you today? Hi, ah, yeah, doing great. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming here um, into, you know, a place that you know very well, the old Web3 Foundation office. So let's go straight into it because I've always wondered, how did you get into the entire Web3 space after, you know, being in, also in the education business and being a tutor? Sure. Uh, so I am actually one of the few people who got into cryptocurrency and blockchain, Web3 in general, because he was interested in hash functions. Oh, <laughs> so I was actually doing some analysis of different hash functions uh, back in, in 2010 or so, uh, essentially looking for ways to efficiently uh, store data in a distributed system. And, you know, so you can see already here, right, distributed systems, hash functions. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. And a, a coworker of mine said, hey, there's this new Internet money called Bitcoin that uses hash functions. And I said, oh, that's interesting. So I actually read the Bitcoin white paper very, very early, uh, but didn't really get involved until a few years later. Um so I, yeah, I got into Bitcoin about 2012, you know, ran a node, uh, you know, saw how things were, were, were going on there. Uh, but I didn't really dive in deeply until Ethereum came out. And that's when I sort of saw all right, what this technology is really capable of, right? The idea of smart contracts. And I know you can do smart contract like things with Bitcoin, but here, once you had something Turing complete, right, this really opened up the world. And so I got more and more involved uh, in Ethereum. I gave, as far as I know, the first talk about Ethereum in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know. That's a fun fact. Yeah, uh, I started teaching classes in blockchain. I was a, an editor at um, uh, Ledger, which is a journal of, of uh, distributed ledger technologies. Um, and I just wanted to dive more deeply into this. So I was teaching at the University of Pittsburgh, but Web3 Foundation, uh, so you know, in, in this office right here, uh, was looking for a technical educator. And uh, so they, they hired me. My, my family and I moved here to Zug, to the Crypto Valley, uh, and have been here and with Web3 Foundation ever since 2019. Wow, yeah, that's quite a journey, right? Um, I mean, that's super interesting to see someone that got in it very early for, you know, a lot of technical uh, reasons. How did you then go from, let's say, Web3 Foundation, you know, uh, obviously educating people on Polkadot um, to actually launching your own coin? <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the, the coin to which you're referring is Billcoin. <laughs> um, I was really just looking for something fun to do uh, with Polkadot. You know, there's so many different things you can do with the technology and launching a coin, right? It's like launching an ERC-20. So a, what we call a state mine asset, now just, just an asset uh, on uh, on Kusama, you know, our Canary network, uh, just to show how it was done. And, you know, it's a valueless token, uh, but I've developed a lot of scripts for giving it away uh, and have given it to a lot of people. It's given me a really interesting opportunity to interact with the community. Uh, so, and you will be seeing some more interesting uses uh, for Billcoin in the future. Uh, I've already started giving them to people who inscribe images uh, on Polkadot. So just like Bitcoin ordinals, uh, right? You can inscribe images that, yeah. on the relay <laughs> chain. And I, I said, if you do that, then I'm happy to give you some bill coins. Um, and just today, uh, I, I made a remark uh, a few months back uh, on chain is, hey, if anyone notices this, uh, message me with this secret word at, at Bill Laboon on Twitter and I'll give you some bill coins. And so someone just today saw it. They were just Sorry. looking. Yeah. <laughs> looking through what was happening on Kusama and happened to see this remark and, and sent me a message. And so, so, so bill coins are just, you know, this fun thing. Um, they're actually one of the assets uh, on the Kusama asset hub that is owned by, I think it's the second or third most widely spread, like it's in the most accounts. And uh, yeah, if anyone wants bill coins, please feel free to ask. And I, I'm happy to, to send them out to any Kusama address. That's always a great story to tell, I bet. You know, it's just leading ahead and showing people what can be done. Is that something that you're always looking into when, you know, on the educational side? Yeah. So as I mentioned, I was a teacher. I was a lecturer at University of Pittsburgh for five years. And I've always found, you know, showing is better than telling, right? You know, it's the classic marketing uh, yes. 
phrase, right? But 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 it's or or uh, not marketing um, uh, storytelling phrase, right? Uh, but but it's 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 true, right? For me, it's much easier to say, okay, I can look at this coin, I can see how it's done, and then I, I can make my own. Maybe that gives me ideas for my own tokens that could be used for something. Uh, Instead of like, you know, and I mean, again, you know, I've spent a lot of time putting together the Polkadot wiki, but I understand people are not going to read through that, see what's available. And they'd rather see, all right, what can I actually do with it? And then they're inspired to do it on their own. And it's the same whenever I taught something uh, you to university students, I really tried to start the lecture with, OK, here is a problem and here's how we solve it. And then we go into the details, right, of why. Or right, why do you want to write tests? Uh, you know, so just as an example, right? And like, so I show a problem that it, in software that isn't very uh, um, easy to see, right? But then like, okay, now we can see, we write tests. All right, well, how do we get to these tests? How do we decide what we, what we do? And I think it's the same thing, right? As part of my role in educating, part of that is also showing what is the chain capable of. And so I'm, I'm sort of constantly like doing experiments, like, you know, like these, uh, uh, these inscriptions, right? Uh, just like, hey, let's see how this can happen. Can we put images here? Uh, can we make, can we make tokens? Can we, how do we make smart contracts on this uh, chain, et cetera? I like the approach because it's something, you know, obviously you are aware there's this big discussion about marketing in Polkadot and there's all those initiatives of, of, of using uh, OpenGov, which is also something we're going to later. Um, but show, I totally agree, showing is much more um, valuable than telling people what to do, right? Um, so how, what would you encourage other people to do in that regard? So I would encourage people to try things out on Polkadot. Um, or Kusama or West End, the, the test net. You know, Kusama, um, you know, it, it's very easy to get KSM tokens. Uh, West End, the test net, it's, you know, they're, they're free, there's a faucet, um, and you can do, do a lot with it. You know, so one of the really interesting things uh, about Polkadot, like the technology and substrate behind it, is it's very easy to just look through what are all the possibilities, right? So if you, again, it, it might look a little bit intimidating at first, but if you go to Polkadot.js, I know it's, it's, it looks intimidating, <laughs> um, but you can actually see all right, what is every single thing, what is every single query that I can make to like you know see what's on chain? What is every single function that I can do? What is anything that I can call like that local node and get data from? Uh, you really get a lot of information. And if it's on a test net or something, it doesn't cost anything to experiment, right? Try something. Oh, I wonder what this does. See, you know, what, do, what does this value? Maybe, you know, talk with the community, you know, figure, figure things out. What I would love to see personally is just people curious about Polkadot. There's just so many capabilities out there, so many different parachains that all have different functionalities and that you, that you can build on. And so I really would just love to see more curiosity like, and see what you can do and try it, try it. And like, it's a, even on a test net, you know, what's the worst that will happen? <laughs> you know, you just have to go back to the faucet and get some more Westies. I like the idea, right? Trying and also showing people because some people didn't want to try themselves, right? So seeing things and in this world of, you know, social media where attention span is, I mean, I'm, a, I'm Gen Z, so for me, the attention span is maybe like 10 seconds, right? Uh, so <laughs> this is quite a challenge, which I also face uh, from a marketing perspective, but also you can very clearly see you, for example, yeah, if we dive into the topic, you know, OpenGov, um, it can be very entertaining and it, or it, <laughs> good or bad, whatever you want to call it, right? But um, it can be very entertaining and sometimes you just need attention before you have the interest of people, right? Because not everyone's super curious. So one of the questions, you know, uh, I'm just going to ask and want to see your reaction and your opinion is, is it too soon for OpenGov? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I, I don't think it's too soon, but I do think we are early. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have seen in other networks, right, on-chain voting of, of some sort, right? Um, and, you know, in fact, uh, there was, you know, a Cosmos, uh, very, I can't remember the referendum name or number, but, you know, they're, they're definitely, just, just today, there was a very big, you know, like Cosmos referendum. You know, Tezos has been doing this for, for several years, something similar. Um, you know, Polkadot, as you know, has an extremely powerful form of autonomous 
on-chain governance. All of the decisions are in the hands of the DOT holders. And this is a big responsibility. Okay. I don't think it's too early. Uh, you, you, I, I do see that there are problems, but I do see problems also with democracy in the real world, right? And I see, you know, there is a lot of drama. There is a lot of arguing. There is a lot of, you know, heat and noise. But you know, as an American, I'm very familiar <laughs> with heat and noise, you know, in, You're in, here tradi for it. <laughs> yeah, in traditional <laughs> elections. Um, you know, this is something that's, you know, sort of a natural byproduct uh, of, of this, of this. And so, yes, I, I, mean, I think we're, we're already seeing like an evolution, right? We've actually had OpenGov on Kusama for almost a year now. And, you know, we've had, you know, I, we can discuss specific stories, but there's been a lot of drama uh, on on Kusama with, with the hack-in, with, with cha the chaotic entity. We've taken some of these things and we've, you know, made some uh, adjustments to the Polkadot OpenGov and we're seeing chaos on OpenGov right now in, in a different way. But... It's 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 evolving, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you know, uh, perhaps like all right. So uh, you know, you're Gen Z, I'm Gen X. So like the classic Gen X guy movie is mm -hmm. Fight Club, and uh, yeah. So Tyler Durden says, "I say let's evolve. Let the chips fall where they may." You know, it's it's going to be a messy process, uh, but you know, we're, we're seeing solutions, right? You know, we're we're discussing this, uh, you know publicly I'm, I'm discussing with people like offline just like you know like hey this is you know with ideas for governance we're seeing new proposals and referenda and it's also really exciting it's really dynamic and i think you know that's what we need right is a you know this is what polka dot is meant to be is a dynamic blockchain and i think this is what blockchain technology is meant to be is something that's you know, evolving and exciting and new it's a very good take yeah and it's also one of the challenges, as always, is to get people involved, right? Um, and if everything is going well, then people don't feel the need to be part of something because, you know, if someone else does it, that's fine. Um, and sometimes you just need to have this uh, controversy or let's say politics, because that's what politics are, right? Um, and it's probably the best, it's the best proof that it replicates the, uh, democracy, right? Um, because, yeah, I totally agree. Also in traditional politics, it's exactly the same. And it's also very interesting for me to see that people are surprised that, you know, those uh, things take over. Um, yeah, politics is politics. It doesn't matter if it's on the blockchain <laughs> or not. Yeah. Fair point. Yeah. Um, you also started a long time ago or we've seen also recently uh, things like cancellation initiatives um, and other elements that can be implemented, you know, to... Uh, to let's say um, uh, protect, in that case, the treasury or uh, proposals for funding, um, is that something you've been doing for a long time, or is that something that you would also, you know, like to see more, or do you think this is something that should be handled before, not in retrospect? So actually, before I answer that, I just want to step mm -hmm. back, sure. right, about the uh, you know the design of the system, right, and you know, the the. OpenGov system was designed, you know, by Gav and some of the researchers at Web3 Foundation. We have, you know, quite a few, you know, PhDs, you know, who have who've, yes. you know, interacted <laughs> with it. And, you know, cancellation and kill uh, referenda that allow you to either stop other referenda or both stop and slash mm -hmm. the deposits for those are, are an important part, right, uh, of this. Because otherwise, there's no real... Um, incentive not to spam the network, no real incentive not to uh, you know, whatever, right? You know, like mm -hmm. just you know, the, that 0.1% chance that maybe you will get 100,000 dot, right? Uh, for, for not doing anything because people don't notice. And so, so I do think there are a lot of cases where the cancels and even kills are useful. So let's just, you know, some of the ones that I've done, um, there was a, a referendum for an up, runtime upgrade uh, that turns out would, would cause some problems, right? Uh, so in fact, you know, with, with just the, the, the latest uh, Polkadot, excuse me, the, the second to last uh, Polkadot runtime upgrade, where this would have changed uh, some of the locking periods uh, for, for, for people holding DOT. And it was like, we, I, you know, decided, you know, I said, all right, we really don't want this to pass yet because it would cause a lot of problems for the community. Um, 
And so the easiest thing to do is just issue, you know, talk with the, the Polkadot Fellowship and tell them, hey, we're going to issue a cancel referendum. Uh, you know, we, we all agreed like they were going to make some changes. Uh, or, you know, we had a spam referendum. Uh, someone, it was actually like, you know, an airdrop scam. And so, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, the, and these people wanted to, you know, they were trying to scam people and they had put down, a, a, you know, 101 dot in total in deposits. And if we don't cause like some pain to scammers, then they're just going to infect the system, right? You know, we, we see this, you know, with, with email, with Twitter, with Telegram. I, I just posted on Twitter today about like all of my Telegram messages and, you know, it just uh, uh, so many scams because there's no, there's no penalty for it. There needs to be some sort of penalty for malicious referenda and some way to stop referenda that shouldn't pass. It's a funny point because just today, uh, someone from our team got uh, impersonated online. Uh, so now we told everyone tells him that he made it, you know? Yeah, yeah congratulations. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Congrats, David. <laughs> That's your uh, I made it moment, right? Um, so yeah, it's it's very important, in my opinion, to, to have initiatives and also to talk about them, right? Because knowing what your options are is very important. Um, but not a lot of people like to spend the time on learning what those options are. I think that's probably also your biggest challenge as an educator in this ecosystem to tell people what you can do, how you can do it. And there's not that many curious people. There are a lot, don't get me wrong, but the majority isn't, right? Um, how do you envision the growth of this, right? Obviously, you know, it's all depending on on, on global econom uh, economies, you know, um, but how do you want to grow this into something where it should be super easy for people to follow? Um, I mean, if you compare it to traditional politics, you know, which is also very complicated and, you know, you need to read all the documents before you send out. I mean, here we get it per mail, right? In Switzerland. What's your vision on that? So one, I, I think actually I would question the premise just a little bit. I think sure. we actually have uh, quite a few people, uh, surprisingly, uh, quite a few accounts. I mean, obviously we don't know, uh, yeah, right, uh, you know, if any are Sybils or not, uh, but we actually have over 1,500 accounts that have participated in OpenGov. Uh, that's pretty significant number, even if you assume that you know, many of these accounts are um, uh, essentially duplicates or copies or just just people having multiple accounts. Uh, however, uh, it, it, we still do have like a relatively low turnout, right? Mm -hmm. In in the generally, let me just do some quick, quick math, like, you know, s definitely single digit percentages. Okay. Yeah. And I, I don't know how much that will change, like we would like it to change. Um, but it is a complicated process. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of referenda. Some of these can be quite technical. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing we do really encourage people to do is to delegate to, to others who may like, ha and you can delegate on specific tracks. So on different topics, like you may trust me for technical stuff, but you maybe don't trust me. Uh, I look like one of those tax and spend guys. So you don't trust me with treasury proposals, <laughs> but you trust me with runtime upgrades. Um, so, so I really, just like you know, we do here, right? Um, uh, again, so I, I, I'm just going to pick some random political party sure. just because I happen to see it right beforehand. But like, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm a voter here in Switzerland. I'm not because I'm not yet a sort of citizen. Um, Soon. <laughs> <laughs> still a ways to go before that. But the, uh, you know, I choose some political party and I may not know. Let's say I'm very much in line with FDP mm -hmm. I, or whatever, Green Liberale, whatever. And I may not have the knowledge of every single referendum that comes up, but I can see, okay, well, what does the representative, you know, from the Green Liberale or, or FDP or whatever, right? What do they say? I, I can delegate my vote to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and we can do the same thing on, on chain. I think it's, you can't ask people to spend their entire lives, right? Like focusing on, on open, open governance. Uh, but what you, what you can ask them to do is say, Hey, figure out, you know, who do you, who do you align with most that you, you believe in their vision? And we're already seeing like these mini political parties, 
uh, you know, come up. You know, we we have um, you know some uh, like Ivy or Chaos style, which are very uh, deliberately party like in collectives. Mm -hmm. There are others uh, like like uh, Giotto, uh, who very you know he has a, he's sort of a, I almost think of him and 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 Giotto. I'm sorry, is this the stereotypes your view? But you're sort of a one issue voter, right? You know, he has a, a philosophy uh, that he thinks, all right, this is what we need to do with polka dot, um, and you know others vote with him because that they agree with that philosophy. Philosophy. Uh, so it's really interesting seeing this evolve. Uh, and, you know, this is what decentralization is all about. It's not about one person making a decision, right? And it's also not about pure anarchy where every person can uh, you know, come up with their own idea, but, you know, developing coalitions and, you know, seeing this evolve naturally. Uh, I think it's, it's really interesting. And even though it's messy, I think democracy in general is messy. Uh, it gets less messy as time goes on. And it's, it's just very interesting seeing it evolve because it is evolving. It's getting better uh, as, as we go on. It's a good point. It's fascinating, right? It's, it hasn't even been, especially open, open golf. I think it hasn't even been a year. On Polkadot, no, less than a year. Kusama, about a year. Yeah, Kusama, about a year. Um, and because the pace is so high, we all expect it, you know, to, to progress so, so much quicker than you would with anything else. Um, that's also what, in my opinion, is very interesting, right? Now we, we have time to explore, to, to uh, make mistakes, to, to try. Um, because, you know, obviously uh, down the road it will become much more mature. Um, one of the questions that I, I've been asked by a couple of people, so I'm going to uh, be the messenger here for that. But um, crowd loans is uh, for part chains is obviously a big topic um, on one side because you do lock a lot of dots. Mm -hmm. And I'm also curious, as far as I understand, those dots cannot be used by whoever raised the crowd loan for uh, participating in governance, right? Correct. Is that something that would maybe be interesting in the future? Yeah, so this actually is a discussion right now on the Polkadot forum of, you know, like sort of, let's sort of step back on theoretically why that would be a good idea is, you know, parachains are a huge part of Polkadot. And essentially, you know, to participate in Polkadot as a parachain, you need to lock up dot that you cannot use for governance, right? Yes. Uh, just by, by, by design. And in some ways that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Because these parachains, they have so much riding on Polkadot and yet they don't have a, a voice, right? It's, uh, you know, again, as an American, we had that old saying, no taxation without representation. <laughs> and uh, so, so that's definitely, <laughs> right, like an issue. It's the same thing with uh, nomination pools. So right now, if you uh, are staking via nomination pool, you cannot participate in governance. Uh, and that's, and both of these are really, sort of, uh, actually both have a sort of technical reason for this because you actually are moving the dot out of your yes. account. Um, and I, I would say for, in terms of parachains, there's also a um, sort of a philosophical reason. I think this is actually, there's a good argument either either way, right? Because like I just said, like, all right, the parachains have all this dot locked up on their behalf. You know, although they don't own them, uh, but it is sort of on their behalf, yet they don't have a voice. On the other hand, though, does it make sense for the people who locked up the dot, because it does not have to be the parachain that locked up that dot, uh, that they are not just giving up that dot and the potential staking rewards you know, in this crowd loan, or uh, but also their governance rights. Mm -hmm. okay? And you know, we saw, you know, there's, there's a very, so that, that's one problem, right? You know, philosophically, uh, two, you know, some of these crowd loans have been huge, you know, especially some of the very early ones. Uh, and would it make a lot of sense, uh, to give so much power to particular parachains, right? Just because they had a really good crowd loan, does that mean that they should get more power uh, in terms of voting? You know, maybe there's some other mechanism here where like you're know, getting a, a, a parachain slot uh, means that you have, you know, some limited amount of, of voting or, uh, you know, I can think of other possibilities, right? Or maybe just like the ability to signal that they're voting some way with some like, you know, minuscule amount uh, of dot. So I do think this is something that you know, it's being discussed. 
I don't know if there is a good answer. And I see you know, philosophical and technical arguments on both sides uh, of the issue. I love that answer because a lot of people, they, I love that you said you don't know if you have a good answer yeah. because most people would never admit that, right? <laughs> that, that's really class. Um, that being the topic, right? So with agile core time, obviously on the horizon, is that that's also something that's going to change. But how do you see the demand for part chains? Um, because yes, they are limited. As I understand, there would be a possibility to increase the amount of part chains, mm -hmm. especially with agile core time, right? Because not everyone needs to have the cap full capacity of a part chain. So how do you see that roll out in the future, the demand for part chains, crowd loans, and then obviously the entire uh, system? Yeah, so I think you know, we, we think in terms of, of, of block space, right? Like, you know, uh, that's really our goal, right? Is is to have more block space and uh, have access to that. So I think right now, you know, the the supply of block space is you know lower than demand. I think our goal, you know, we could have right now we could be easily running more parachains, right? On Polkadot, there's a lot more room uh, for for parachains. Mm -hmm. So I don't know actually that we're going to see a lot of difference immediately. Where and this is, you know, sort of immediately once we move to this, like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, if you if you're the only car or whatever, there's, you know, two or three cars on a five lane highway. Right. And then you add six or seven more lanes. It's not going to make much of a difference. Um, however, what I, I think in the long run is, you know, again, this is going to allow much more. You know, what I see my goal as is to you know, help people learn how to develop on Polkadot and become interested in developing on Polkadot, to have more parachains. Uh, and having Agile core time makes it much easier to have a parachain, right? It makes it much easier to do other things that maybe are not parachain related, right? That you can have, you know, smart contract like, you know, uh, uh, applications, right? You're know, running directly you know, on the Polkadot relay chain. And so what I think in the long run, we'll see more demand for this because it will be easier to develop. Uh, you know, Generally, what we've seen, if you apply for a parachain, you're going for a two-year slot. Theoretically, you actually can go for, for less, but this is not something that I don't think we've ever seen it on Polkadot uh, that someone did not bid for the maximum length. Well, yeah, I think they bid for the maximum, and if they don't need it, they can, you know, I think there was the first case where they swap it, right? Yes, oh, yeah, they can swap, but I mean, like, in the in the actual mm -hmm. sure. uh, auctions. Um, I, I feel like there was one instance of that on Kusama, but I, I could be wrong. But it's it's very rare, mm -hmm. right? Because it, it's difficult when you are going up against, you know, you have a week-long uh, auction. You know, we've seen t some teams, like in Varch, it took actually quite a while uh, for them to, to get a slot. And... It, this adds a lot of friction to onboarding. It means that you need a larger team, right? It's, it's hard for a single person. It's not impossible, like the GM parachain, which allows you to do uh, decentralized GMs and GNs uh, to people, was made by like one person over a weekend. But generally, like you know, it requires a lot of extra work. And so I think in terms of demand, by making it you know, easier and be, being able to uh, you know, get core time, uh, connect to the Polkadot relay chain in much smaller segments of time, not having to fight with people for an auction and not being as, as, as unclear on when you'll actually get a slot uh, like you know, we have under the current system. Where I think this makes it much easier for people to onboard to Polkadot. And I think that is what's going to increase demand in the future because we'll have more people developing, more teams able to do it. They'll have a better idea of when they'll be able to start. And, you know, we all know, you know, like running a business, you know, uncertainty is the enemy, right? So we can get a little more certainty, which means that it will be you know, easier to build on Polkadot. And I think that's what's going to drive demand. Uh, and, you know, we'll see more, teams building in our ecosystem. I can uh, confirm as someone who was part of a parchin auction <laughs> myself. Um, yeah, we could we could have uh, spent the time wisely for other things. Yes. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's the same again, right? We need time to, to uh, evolve in that department as well. Um, so but that being said, you know, we talk about people trying stuff, building new things. Is there something very particular right now that you feel like the initiative or new projects on the horizon that are 
something that you're curious about to know more or that you believe, hey, this is something I want to try or that, that's going to be interesting for you? I am, uh, well, I am personally very excited um, about the Bridge Hub. Uh, so, you know, different bridges uh, coming to Polkadot. Uh, so, you know, the Polkadot Kusama Bridge, uh, Snow Fork with their uh, the Ethereum Bridge, like, you know, interacting with other uh, other external chains, I think is going to be very exciting. Uh, so, you know, Beefy, uh, which is a second. Yeah, I, I love the name. Uh, you know, we've got Babe, Grandpa, Beefy. I need to know who comes up with those names, man. <laughs> Yeah, different topic. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a different topic, and uh, we we can we can ask some of the researchers. Uh, hey, don't get me wrong. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm sure there's like one person that's their specialty is just coming up with these fun names. But so so Beefy is is a secondary fina uh, finality protocol uh, that was uh, uh, we've just started uh, uh, activating that in the latest runtime, uh, and so you know we should be seeing this you know, like very soon, like this Polkadot Kusama bridge and uh, you know Polkadot Ethereum bridge. And I'm very excited to see this, right? I've always loved how, you know, Polkadot can interact with other chains. Like I love, you know, like teleporting, like again, you know, I have a bill account. Anyone wants to look it up on Kusama, uh, you know, and you can see like I, me just like playing around teleporting tokens from place to place and seeing how stuff works. And I'm very excited then for us to interact uh, you know, with, with other networks. You know, we already have Interlay, which has like a trustless mm -hmm. uh, way of, of, of vaulting uh, Bitcoin and then getting um, a, you know, IBTC, right, as a representation of that and then trustlessly moving it back uh, to, to, to the Bitcoin network. And it's super cool, right? And this is the world of Web3, right? There is no one chain to rule them all. We The idea of Polkadot is that all of these chains on Polkadot can interact with each other. And by now interacting with 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 Kusama, with Ethereum, with you know future uh, bridges, there are some other bridges already out there. And I know, um, you know we have things like like ISMP, which is another uh, type of bridge mm -hmm. uh, by Polytope Labs. I'm really excited about these bridges uh, and seeing you know what happens and how our network can interact with others. Yeah, I can confirm. Um, bridge is definitely also a big topic for us. Uh, you know, very excited to see um, and <laughs> being able to implement it. That's obviously a very good point here. Um, I think we've covered a lot of cool stuff here today. Um, I'm very excited. So, so you know, everyone says it's Polkadot dead. I think, you know, we can confirm it's uh, not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and now, thank you so much for being here. It was very fun to talk to you uh, and, you know, have those discussions um, and give some insights into the ecosystem. And maybe some people, uh, you know, they're now uh, eager to learn more uh, about certain things. Um, but now it's your time to shine. If you have something to plug, I know you do. Um, so we have a camera here, a camera here. Um, yeah, what's going on in your life? Uh, yeah, so there are several things uh, happening. Um, so uh, first off, uh, you know, just on the topic of, uh, of polka dots not dead, actually. Uh, you know, every day I write the polka dot digest. It's available on Twitter, on Polkaverse, uh, on LinkedIn, anywhere you find Bill Laboon accounts, you're going to find <laughs> uh, the polka dot digest. And you know, polka dot is not dead. I I spend half an hour every morning, or maybe even more putting together what all is happening in Polkadot. You know, we have 63 active referenda on Polkadot OpenGov today. Like there's a lot happening. Um, and Bill's Polkadot Digest is where you can find out about all of these. Uh, also, uh, for, for those uh, who don't know, I have written a book. Uh, as far as I know, perhaps the first science fiction novel about cryptocurrency, uh, Strength in Numbers. So available wherever fine books are sold. So uh, please check that out if you're interested in seeing uh, how I view the world of, of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Well, awesome. Thank you for, for being here. And uh, that was the first episode of Early Birds. And yeah, let's wrap it up. Let's have some coffee or, or whatever your beverage of choice is. And yeah, I think that's it. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>